Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship with Anaheim United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor James Dollins, and it is a joy to worship with you on this beautiful fall morning. I'd like to express thanks to Reverend Darren Cowdery, who offered a wonderful message last Sunday and also afforded my wife Serena and me the opportunity to be away for a week on vacation for much needed rest and renewal. Thank you so much for all who filled in during that week and the wonderful worship that was put together for last Sunday. For this Sunday, of course, we are uh, going to offer some recognition of Veterans Day, which was this past Wednesday. Uh, we have many people in our church who have served in the military, and in honor of them, we would like to share with you this video presentation this morning.
And now, with grateful hearts, singing our thanks and praise, let us join in song together, singing, We Gather Together. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 14 through 29. For it is as if a man, going on a journey, summoned his slaves and entrusted his property to them. To one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his ability. Then he went away. The one who had received the five talents went off at once and traded with them and made five more talents. In the same way, the one who had two talents made two more. But the one who had received the one talent went off and dug a hole in the ground and hid his master's money. After a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. Then the one who had received the five talents came forward, bringing five more talents, saying, Master, you handed over to me the five talents. See, I have made five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one who had the two talents also came forward, saying, Master, you handed over to me two talents. See, I have made two more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and trustworthy slave. You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Then the one who had received the one talent also came forward, saying, Master, I knew that you were a harsh man, reaping where you did not sow, and gathering where you did not scatter seed. So I was afraid, and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Here you have what is yours. But his master replied, You wicked and lazy slave, you knew, did you, that I reap where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter. Then you ought to have invested my money with the bankers, and on my return I would have received what was my own with interest. So take the talent from him and give it to the one with ten talents. For to all those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me before I offer a message this morning? Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. These days of fall bring a lot of feelings into our hearts. The days are shortening, they become cooler. Perhaps we're looking more to the end of the year and that stirs emotions in us. Sometimes it even causes us to think about the end of our lives or the end of a season. Um, sometimes it causes us to think about the aging process itself, the aging of our church that has served so faithfully for so many generations in our community. Several years ago, I wrote a poem about the church and its own aging process. I use the symbol from the scriptures, the Bride of Christ, which is sometimes another name that refers to the Christian church, the Bride of Christ, which awaits the bridegroom who will come at the end of time to uh, celebrate their marriage forever in heaven. This poem is called Bride of Christ, Aging Church. You still are lovely, Bride of Christ, though self-conscious of your appearance, Growing weary of your work, you still press on. Yearning to hear a voice say, Well done, good and faithful servant. You worry that your better years are gone. But take heart and be radiant, Bride of Christ, Church of good people. Miracles have occurred because of you. Though your work is now different, and seems so much more humble, God will soon accomplish something new. This aging process brings nostalgic feelings to our hearts. We remember the good old days. We worry that they may never be replicated. This happens in our individual lives and also in our life as a church. Sometimes it may even steer, stir fears in us that we're running out of time and that uh, we'd better be careful or be cautious with what we have, with the blessings God has given us. And this is why the parable of the talents is so powerful, because it explores this difference between living out of God's generous love and blessing versus living out of fear. The master in this parable, of course, gives talents to his servants and then leaves for a long time. It's a parable that is symbolic of our life and the meaning in our lives. Um, the master, of course, representing God and then entrusting to his servants these talents, these blessings in different portions. Of course, some servants receive more than others, and this is true of our own talents or gifts as well or our treasures. Of course, a talent in biblical times was a, um, was a currency, and it was worth a great deal of money. One talent was worth 15 years of wages. So to the first uh, servant, the master gives uh, five talents, to the next two and to the third one. Apparently, he had some idea of their abilities to invest those talents or not to do so. The first invest very generously or uh, courageously with those talents and double their money and return those uh, revenues to their master upon his return. But the third is so afraid that he will somehow waste his master's money and, and assumes that his master is a fearful, angry, wrathful master. Uh, and so he buries that money and it of course earns no interest or revenue whatsoever and in the end the master takes away that talent from that servant but to the other servants he speaks to them a word of affirmation well done good and trustworthy servant or here it says slave the old renditions of the scripture were servant 
You have been trustworthy in a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. This is a confusing parable at times, but it really has a very simple message to us. We have a choice to make. Will we live lives of fearfulness? Will our actions reflect that fear? Or will we live in lives of generosity and gratitude and be free to share the blessings that we've been given? I remember in elementary school in our church in Escondido in uh, Serena in my home church, we would sing a song, love is something if you give it away, give it away, give it away. Love is something if you give it away, you end up having more. And we would do the hand motions to that song. It was a reminder of this ironic truth that when we are more generous with God's blessings, we multiply those blessings, just as in this story. It's also a reminder that all things belong to God. Nothing that we have is truly our own. The idea of private property and those ideas, they're, of course, human-made notions that help us to organize our lives with our neighbors, but God doesn't have any notion of who owns what. All things belong to God. To take this idea to an extreme, I'd like to share with you about a friend of mine named uh, Slim. We uh, called him Slim. He was a preacher who worked with us in Chicago when I was a pastor there. Slim and his wife had two beautiful girls, and they loved those girls more than anything else in their lives. And Slim said, I have to remind myself and be always aware that these girls don't belong to me. They're baptized daughters of God. They are God's creations. I have the privilege of taking care of them. I have the responsibility of doing that. But these girls belong to God. And that helped him, of course, to have perspective on the awesome responsibility that it was to be the father of these two beautiful young girls. We too are invited to have this perspective, to move away from fearfulness to the trust that we are managing the things of God's. As one pastor said, we're playing with house money. All of this money is God's money. All that we own belongs to God. We have nothing to fear. We might as well invest it freely and give it to others as is needed. There are many stories like this uh, that remind us of the lessons of this parable. Uh, I heard a folk tale recently about a man who had saved all of his life's earnings and he invested them in a gold brick and he buried that brick very carefully at the very back of his property at the foot of a hill Each day he would go out to dig that gold brick up and make sure that it was still there, admire it for a moment, and then bury it carefully in the ground once again. Only one day he walked out to that same place and he found that there was an empty hole. Someone had dug up that brick and stolen it. And with loud cries of lament, he complained to the skies and he ran to his neighbor's house and said to her, someone has stolen my life savings. They've robbed me of my precious gold brick. And the neighbor who knew this man very well said, it's going to be okay. In fact, I know a way that you can make things just as they were. And he said, how? She said, find a stone and paint that stone gold and bury it right where that gold brick was. She said, that way you'll have a piece of stone that you can always keep just as you were going to keep that gold brick without ever spending it at all. (laughs) What a waste to simply bury our treasures out of fear of losing them to guard what we have until they become absolutely worthless. My wife and I also love the story Silas Marner by George Eliot. Uh, 
We, of course, named our younger son Silas. It's a name that comes from the Bible. Silas is a partner and friend of St. Paul's who, who helped to spread the good news in the early biblical times. Silas is also the name of Silas Marner, and this is a book that used to be taught to many, many school children for generations in this country. When I thought with Serena that Silas might be a nice name to name our son, I said, the only thing is it's also the name of that, that man, Silas Marner. It's got a negative connotation. He's such a miser. And she said, well, I love that story because he was a miser, but his heart is changed as he adopts this baby girl, as he learns to love again, as love is awakened in his heart and he's transformed. And so, of course, I remembered uh, she had actually read the book and uh, I had to reread it as soon as we named our son that as well. It's become a favorite book in our family, at least uh, for me and Serena. There are many stories of people who fearfully guard their wealth until it becomes worthless, or those who learn to love and to share again. There are also true stories of this. There are churches who have experienced this same story in our lifetimes as well. A church member from my previous church shared with me a rather tragic story. She said that she belonged to, uh, her friend belonged to a church in the Midwest, and that church had a generous endowment. I believe it was over a half million dollars. It might have been more like a million dollars. And this friend of hers who attended worship in the Midwest always hoped that that church would do something exciting with that, with those funds. They knew that they had so much potential. But in those days, the leadership refused to ever use that money. They said it was always for something else and it needed to be kept for the future. And finally, the church closed its doors. They had no ministry left at all. And of course, those monies were relinquished to the greater national denomination. The property was sold. No ministry was continued in that community. Surely that was not what the donors of that money had in mind. Their dreams had perished with the fears of the church members who followed them. I asked my friend Mary, uh, what happened to that church member friend of yours? She said she hasn't attended church ever since. She was so disheartened by the hardness of hearts in her church members. I'm so grateful that our church also has a legacy of giving through bequests and endowments to our own United Methodist Foundation, and it has been managed with generous hearts. And at times we've taken some risks and, and invested in the future. In recent years, we have hired staff which, who, has, who have helped us to start a new worship service, the Gather Worship Service, which is designed to minister to young adults and to have a more contemporary feel, contemporary worship style. And this has attracted some new faces, new uh, worshipers and young adults who would prefer that to the more traditional style of worship. This is an effort that has been quite successful. This church, that church service has now survived for several years, the Gather Worship Service. We're so thankful to our own Molly Robinson and others who lead that service each week. We're invited to invest in the future. Currently, our church is exploring conversations of a family outreach initiative, and we're writing grants and in the process of trying to raise funds from those grants and our reserves and from the giving of our church. We will be extending the opportunity to you also to give toward the family outreach initiative which will renew our efforts to minister to children in this church, and then youth and small group ministries for the whole congregation through a weekday evening meeting that we are prayerfully planning for the future. Though we can't really get started on anything like that right now because of our condition and the pandemic, um, we do pray that we would be ready to start as soon as we uh, are released from these restrictions and able to meet in person again. I invite you to pray for the family outreach initiative 
that is being planned and which our church council will soon discuss in a virtual meeting. Please keep these visions in your prayers so that we might again invest in the future, not fearfully, but in a spirit of gratitude. Let us reflect this gratitude in every way in our lives and in our church. All of us, after all, long to hear these words of affirmation, well done, good and faithful servant. We should be grateful for one another and what each other is doing in the church. We should pause and say these words to each other from time to time. As a pastor, this is one of the most wonderful things I can speak to a person, for example, as they are ready to meet their maker, as they're on their, in their dying days, I can say, well done, good and faithful servant, remembering all of the good works that they have accomplished for their church and for their families and in this world. It's a phrase we all long to hear. It's a phrase that I hope to hear one day when I come to that moment, or hopefully much earlier, well done, good and faithful servant. I'd like to say these words to you who have given so generously of your talents, your uh, time, and your offerings, especially during this time of pandemic quarantine. Many of you have not only continued your generosity to the ministries of Anaheim United Methodist Church, but increased your giving during this time, making our church very vital, keeping us very strong in our ministries so that we're more able to respond to the growing needs of those who are in need around us. Thank you and well done, good and faithful servants. And to the increasing number of you who are volunteering for the food pantry, responding to those needs of those who are jobless and hungry and needing food, thank you for multiplying the ministries of food, the food pantry here at our church. Well done, good and faithful servants. And a great word of gratitude to our administrative and program and music staff members who have kept our worship so vital during this time, kept our offerings of educational opportunities and uh, Bible studies, book studies going. Thank you uh, to all of you who've worked in these ways. And our communications have been excellent, getting vitally important news about regathering or in-person worship or the updates on, um, on those things. Thank you to our communications team in our office for those things. Well done, good and faithful servants. And a special word of thanks to our regathering team, to the medical professionals who are members of our church. We are blessed with three different nurses who are talking about uh, the state of the world and whether it's safe to regather in person or not and when and how. I am so thankful not to be in charge of that conversation. Thank you so much to uh, these nurses and to the entire regathering team. Well done, good and faithful servants. You have helped to keep us safe and to make wise decisions in a precarious time. And on this Sunday following Veterans Day, thank you to all of you who have served our nation who have kept us safe and uh, worked to preserve our freedoms as a country. Well done, good and faithful servants. May all of us live not out of deadly fearfulness, but out of this sense of gratitude and hope, speaking these words to one another on a regular basis and speaking them to ourselves. Yes, you are allowed to say to yourself, well done, good and faithful servant. Whenever you catch yourself doing something right, it's a good idea to say these words to yourself, to multiply your own gratitude, your own generosity, your own blessings, so that you might speak these same words to others. Well done, good and faithful servant. Glory be to God. Amen.
Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, our comfort and our peace. You entrust us with abundant blessings, and you invite us to share them all with love. Whenever we are tempted to fearfully turn inward, restore in us a deep sense of gratitude that frees our souls. Forgive us for the times we have become hard-hearted. Remind us that all things belong to you and are meant to be shared. We give thanks for your church and its many generous souls who serve neighbors with joy every day. Keep us strong, grateful, and rich in your good works so that many others may come to know your grace and peace. Grant us healing, Holy Spirit, as we look back on Election Day, as we look forward to new days to come. Heal us as a nation. Make us more inclined to focus on our commonalities than on our differences. O Lord, cure all those who are sick. Surround them with your healing Holy Spirit. Touch them with the love and strength and health of Christ, who touched and healed so many as he walked among us. Strengthen and protect also all who are tirelessly working to heal others. We thank you and praise you for the progress that has been made this week in finding a cure or at least a vaccine for COVID-19. We pray that this cure would effectively treat many, many people and save many lives in days to come. Holy Spirit, come to the aid of all who are hurting financially in these times and those who have lost employment. Help us as a church to be here for them so that they may come to us as trusted neighbors. We lift now to you all of our prayers of thanksgiving and praise with our petitions and our confessions as we rest in your Holy Spirit in this time of silent prayer. Gracious God, as we lift to you our praises, petitions, and confessions, we trust in the assurance that in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And now we join in the prayer which Jesus taught us, using this paraphrase by Parker Palmer. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, holy, blessed is your true name. We pray for your reign of peace to come, we pray that your good will be done. Let heaven and earth become one. Give us this day the bread we need. Give it to those who have none. Let forgiveness flow like a river between us, from each one to each one to each one. Lead us to holy innocence beyond the evil of our days. Come swiftly, Mother, Father, come. For yours is the power and the mercy and the glory. Forever your name is all in one. Amen. And in a spirit of gratitude for all that our church members give, to, for all that you give in time, talents, and treasures, let us join in this blessing of the offering. Dear Lord, through the offering of these gifts, may we become a more open people, open-minded in hearing your word and wisdom, open-hearted in healing a broken world, open-handed in heeding your call for charity and active love. With thanks for all good gifts, we present a portion of our substance and the whole of ourselves 
Amen. Now, may God who gives us every good blessing fill you with gratitude, guard your hearts, and guide your steps until we meet again. Amen. <laughs>